This video was made possible thanks to the support of our amazing patrons. We couldn't do this without you. Don't forget that you can support the channel for free and receive 10% off orders over $10 of Flipside Gaming by using the promo code AFFINITY at the checkout. Or if TCG Player and Magic Madhouse are more your thing, then be sure to place your order through our affiliate links in the description. Once again, at no extra cost to yourselves. Hello everyone and welcome back to Affinity for Commander. My name is Alex. And my name is Martin. And today we're going to be looking at all the new legends from Kaldheim and giving our opinions on them. Yes, yeah, so there's quite a few, so uh, we're going to do part one today and part two next week. So without further ado, let's get into it. So our first creature is Agar the Freezing Flame. And he, to me, speaks about giant tribal or wizard tribal or maybe even a spell slinger deck. What do yeah. you think? I like the fact that he's a small uh, giant because, mm. like, maybe it's just because I'm playing too much God of War, but giants are like a race. They're not meant to just be huge things. So I like the fact that he's a 3 3 giant. It's low CMC command. Yeah, exactly. It's amazing. It's in nice colors. Um, I don't understand why he himself doesn't have, like, a buff ability or trample to give more flavor to his excess damage. But other than that, I think if you're going to go that route of big stuff like Comet Storm and. Um, Crater's Claw, big burny spells. I think that's a good idea for it because it is that excess damage. Yeah, and the thing with it as well is that he says if you do excess damage, draw a card. Yeah. But you don't have to be the one doing the finishing damage. So, for example, if you bolt a four toughness creature and someone else beats it in combat, but they say deal two damage to it, well, yeah. then you get to draw a card still because you've still dealt damage yeah, to it. Yeah, you get into that little cheeky last hit and you get to draw the card. Yeah, and Death Touch works insanely well with him because anything above one is excess damage. Yeah, that's so. a good point, actually. <laughs> well, I can't yeah. think of anything that's red and blue that's Death Touch. I'm sure there's equipment you can stick on that make it have Death Touch, True. Uh, like Basilisk Collar. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just think it's cool how there's draw attached to this. So you're like, oh, well, I'm dealing more damage than I need due to that creature, but I'm getting yeah. something back back from it so it makes to me it's, it's a really cool command of it for uh, burn spells yeah. but it's just quite nice a uh, few different ideas you can build from there i like the art as well yeah it's pretty cool <laughs> so our next card is alrund god of the cosmos which i think is meant to be odin but at the same time i he's going to be a normally you're on about statistically a five five or a six six you're on mono blue but at the same time i just you can manipulate the top of your library to get the most out of him but because he's mono blue, you can't go heavy into stompy creatures and there aren't all permits you can really take advantage of. You can still manipulate it because blue's great for scrying. But it's just a bit... I don't know, I don't really see him getting there with... Like, it could be the four tall come up, but I think we'd be better in a 99 or a four tall deck. But I like his raven. His raven's cool. Yeah, so that, that's the thing I thought. When you look at his front face, you think, mm, okay, so I'm potentially drawing a couple of cards each yeah. turn. But to me, as the raven... Play him turn two, turn three you swing with the raven, you manipulate the top two cards of your library, and then if you have any form of ramp you can play him turn four, yeah. and you know the two cards you're going to get. So. I'll be more tempted to put um, him, or the raven side, in two lane, because then you get to hit, you scry the top two cards, you bounce the two mana bird back to your hand, play replay it, and then you get to draw those cards with two lane, and maybe play the land. So it can yeah. fix. It can be a nice little value engine with two lane. Well, that's it. To me, it's, it's a good draw engine. Yeah. Potential draw engine, anyway. It's not guaranteed. Yeah. Um, and it may be a Voltron S kind of commander because there's blue auras that say um, this creature can't be blocked and things like that. Yeah. But you'd have to have so many cards in your hand um, to make that happen, or exiled by Fortel. And if they're in Fortel, you want to be casting those cards. You don't want to leave them there unless they're rubbish. And if they're rubbish, why are they in the deck? It, it just doesn't seem like he himself is a great commander, but he'd yeah. be good in other types of strategies. Yeah, definitely 99. Hmm. Up next, we have Arnie Broken Bar. <sighs> we just Knew said it. about we're not being able to say it. <laughs> okay. So up next we have Arnie Brokenbrow, and I don't like him. No. To me, he's a 3 mana 3-3 of three, three of hay, so you play him, you swing, and for one extra mana you can make his um, power yeah. equal to 1 plus the greatest power of creatures you control. So let's yeah. say you've got a 10 drop out, a 10, 10 power card out, for example. Yeah. You make him an 11-3, which sounds really good until you realise he's still got 3 toughness, and yeah. anything that blocks him is going to take like, him out. If he had, if he had first strike, brilliant. If you had Trample, kind of see it. But the fact he's got no keywords on him at all, 
Look just, at my haste, that's a keyword. Yeah, he just <laughs> seems he just seems very naff. <laughs> so, that's a quote from Alex there, on yeah. a broken route, very naff. So yeah, Mr. Schwarzenegger is definitely not a commander playable card as a commander put Yeah, that way. I think it'd be great in in uh, draft and like you know limited yeah. and maybe even standard, but in commander I just don't no. see it. Ah, uh, now our next card up is Birgi, God of Storytelling, who I think is just... If you've ever wanted to play Storm, this is the commander. It gives you excess mana from just casting spells, so it can make them either cheaper or, if they're one mana, essentially free. And then her flip side is just late game value, where you've started to draw lands, so you're like, don't want this. I'll just get more storm cards on the top of my library. Yeah, the boast kind of effect for her, I don't see being particularly helpful. Stick her in on yeah. um, broken, yeah. <laughs> and then he can do his ability twice. Um, Brilliant. But, like, yeah, I think it's definitely storm, because that extra mana, if you have any cards like, say, uh, is it Expedite? Or the one where you set, like, a pair of feet and you give something haste, haste and then draw, draw a card. A card. Yeah. That just is free card draw, because you yeah. gain the mana back. So, um, things like that, I think you could storm off very quickly. The only thing I have an issue with is it's mono-red, and yeah. you don't have the card draw by itself. It has to be... Yeah, I think she would have to be in, like, one of the Is It um, Storm Commander decks, mm. so that then she can then help add more and more value to that. Like, if she was in something like uh, Mizzix of the Ismargus, then everything's already a lot cheaper, but then her adding that additional red mana means when you do go for... A big comet storm or something like that, then it's just so much bigger. Yeah, or potentially you could go like a um, a pump one hit KO effect where you've got that whole you get extra mana, so you've got your handful of little pump spells. You'll be able to essentially pay them all for free. Yeah, um, and then you could make one creature who's very small and difficult to block or hasn't been blocked because it's just a two two. Yeah. Uh, you could pump it, pump it, pump it, pump it, and then end up winning that way. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, so it's it's an interesting commander. I kind of like it. I quite like it. Mm. Next we have Kozima, God of the Voyage. Um, I don't like this. To me, the human or god side rather is uh, mono blue landfall, which is. Not like the worst pull of a landfall to have because you can't really ramp very well with blue. Yeah. But it's, not... it's the fact that the landfall ability isn't great, it's just a little bit of card draw. Yeah, I think she like ideally what you want is to play her, then put her in exile for like at least two turns to then get the value off her to come back, have a bit bit bigger, draw mm. some cards. Like I can see her maybe being in um like Tatiova. Just for yeah. a bit more landfall because you have more triggers, you get oh, yeah. more cards. Definitely, as a support card, yeah. you draw more. When you run out, you can just bring it back in, back in and then draw more cards. Yeah, exactly. I but, definitely not as a commander. And the other part of her being the boat, being vehicle tribal, I just no. Boros is better for vehicles. They've got so much vehicle and support. Also, <laughs> this is a boat, right? It's yeah. a boat. It's a boat. It doesn't have island walk. It doesn't have island walk. <laughs> Why does it have island walk? And it's, it's also just a 3 3 as well. So it's yeah. a bit of a vehicle hits. You get a really powerful ability, then you cast cards from your opponent's yeah. side. They're not going to want you to do but, that, so they're going to block the boat. Yeah, that's so. <laughs> Why does not have island walk? I don't understand. It's a boat. Yeah, I mean, the other thing I suppose is you could go like a blink kind of effect because she exiles and comes back every turn, provided you've got a land, but. I just, this, nah. no, it just seems like it wants to do too many things poorly and it hasn't yeah. got a set if, theme. Yeah, if she'd just been a bit more... If she wanted to be the blue card that cares about landfall, that's fine. But the fact that she wants to do it from exile, then her boat doesn't there really... Might, there might be a cool way of like abusing her. If you have, maybe have two copies, one in exile, one there, yeah. and like, I'd do things. Uh, but but I, I just don't think it's, Yeah, I just don't think it's worth the setup would be. I mean, maybe we're missing something massive, but I, I'm not a fan. No I, no, I don't think she's very, very good at all. I like the idea. Um, what, what, what's, what's the phrase? 9 out of 10 for ideas, 1 out of 10 for execution. <laughs> Next up, we have Aegon, God of Death, who is a 3 mana 6-6. Six, six. That's they, pretty good. Yeah. Death touch as well. Yeah, that's, mm. I, I think if it's a 6-6, six, six, death touch is pretty, <laughs> <laughs> it's really matter. But, um... Yeah, but you have to exile cards from your graveyard to keep them around, which is a bit weird because his flip side is all about recursion. So well, it mills you as well, so you have cards to put in the bin to keep... You can't have both at the same time. Yeah, exactly. Like the, the, the two sides of them feel like they're very much 
are at odds with each other. Like, his flip side, I really like for something like a recursion-style deck, like a Muldrowth or a Merit, mm-hmm. where you can actually just play cards again and you get to mill. That seems like a really good effect. But then Aegon himself seems actively against you recurring stuff because you need to XR to keep him around. I mean, provided you've got a good enough way of getting cards in your grave, you get rid of the rubbish you don't want and keep him. But I think early game, you play the human side and be like... Right, I'm gonna swing deal some damage. No one's gonna block a six six with their things unless they don't care about them. But if they've just played their commander, yeah, and they don't want to. But unless you go kind of again more Voltron stuff, uh, I suppose Voltron is spreading out the cause, yeah. which is nice. But um, that that would be a way of beating him because you'd only need to buff him a bit and then a couple of hits and they're gone. Um, but yeah, to me again, it's most of these gods feel like they'd be good support in the ninety nine yeah. because they're just not. Especially them being monocolored as That's well. That's it. Like their effects are good, but they're missing the extra bit, which would make them great. The yeah. other commanders already have, i.e., a second color. Yeah, exactly. So, totally fine. Prefer the flip. Hmm. Up next, we have a seeker god of the tree, who is the legendary tribal commander we've all been waiting for. She's five colors because of the flip side, um, and she gives the ability of your legends to tap to add mana, so you can play more of them. And then all your legends have vigilance, so you can go combat, attack, main two, tap them to play more things. They are really powerful. I think the creature side is better because being able to go three drop all my creatures now tap to add mana to play more creatures is better than having one creature from your library enter play each upkeep for like five different colors of mana because your creatures won't tap for mana if you have the other side out. I think it's better to be able... If you have, say... Reiki, um, I can't remember his, his second name now. The guy from Kamigawa, it's three mana. That's I know exactly who you yeah, yeah. yeah. He says, draw a card whenever you play a legend. Yeah. Plus her is like, tap my creature to play a creature to draw, to tap another yeah. one to draw. It's going to be silly. I, I, I am of the exact opposite opinion. I think she's really good as a mana dork herself, yes. And she helps get you out big creatures. But her flip side is halfway to being properly insane. Because if you can... Let's say, well, you're five colors, so you can play literally every tutor under the sun. And equally, if you have something like Sensei's Divining Top and you fix the top few cards of your library or Brainstorm, the ability to, in your upkeep, get literally anything you want for free, and that doesn't count as your draw, that's just for free, is a bit insane. See, I get what you're saying, but let's say you want to cast an Ulamog to see us hunger for 10 mana. Yeah. Surely if you have six land and four creatures, that, that does it anyway. Like, you don't need it a does, five then, mana enchantment to maybe get it. It does, but then that's also my turn done. Whereas this is for free. I have then the rest of my turn to do whatever I want. I suppose it's how you build it in my eyes. I'm thinking quite low to the ground, get as much stuff out as possible. And you're thinking like whereas tiny you're, yeah. t- you're thinking like tiny legends, like the one mana dog and things yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Whereas you're thinking more along the lines of big boys. Yeah, I, I, I am 100% thinking of, right, let us, let's play the bridge, let's brainstorm, let's El Redeem's cause something to the top of my library. Oh, it's turn six. Bang. Yeah, I mean... There's different ways of building her. That's why I think yeah. she's really good. Like she is. If you wanted to play five color super friends, five color legends tribal, yeah. this is definitely the card to go down. Yeah. Um, and I think we'll see a lot more of her in the future. Oh god, yeah. I think she's definitely going to be one of those five color cards. Maybe not quite like OP as Golo. So like I don't think she's going to hit the top of EDH Rex list. She doesn't have an ETB, but I, I, think, yeah, I, think, I think she she's... will be good. Oh, she'll still be popular. I think she's very good. Our next card up is Firija, God of Valor, which I like the idea, which is a good Oars of Commander, 5-5, five, five, Flying Lifelink. She's quite good for being able to dump your hand in those colours, which is not something Oars of normally does. But at the same time, I like the fact that it's also top three, so it's not just draw, so you get a bit of leeway there. But I don't, I don't really see her as a commander. I see her more, again, like a lot of these cards, I see them more as being in the 99 of a... Um, Chaldea reanimated deck, or maybe a Mardu deck that just wants some additional value. I mean, I see where you're coming from there, but I disagree. I think if you're playing either a Weenies deck, or perhaps a, um, a Spell Singer kind of deck, or even Angel Tribal at this point, you want to have more cards in your hand. And being able to say, right, well, I'm going to play a creature, and then also a Path to Exile or something, and then going to 
look at the top three cards of my library and put more gas in my hand or more land in my hand, perhaps to play more bigger spells. I think that her herself, she's not great stat-wise as a creature, but as an effect, if you want to be casting multiple things a turn, I think her ability really enables that. You're going to want to have more cards in your hand. And if you keep playing low to the ground, um, even, say, human tribal weenie kind of deck, um, you could really go off, the, go off of that and just play multiple creatures, draw them back up, always have a big hand, or reanimate it, because you're going to be putting two of those three cards you're looking at in the bin, and you could bring them back really easily. You could, but at the same time, I don't know, I just... You just don't like Orzov. I, just, I don't like Orzov, you're right. <laughs> There's no blue but, in there. <laughs> but at the same time, she just seems, like if that's the way you're going about it, she just seems, again, like it can just be another white, black, aristocrat style deck, which other commanders, other several versions of Taisha have done significantly <laughs> better. Whereas I feel like if she is in something else, then she can be more be more better. More better. That's that's great English there, Alex. <laughs> she can be better <laughs> utilized. Yeah, like I, I can see that. I mean I don't think she's gonna be the best commander ever played, but I think certainly people who play her and play her well. Yeah. Next we have Finn the Fangbearer, who is in I mean, like, <laughs> so the way I looked at it is, if you're playing Death Touch Tribal, for example, because he has Death Touch has like um, poison counters, yeah, yeah, not yeah. quite infect, but might as well. Be. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Death Touch has not many mono green Death Touch creatures, so nope. you have to add infect creatures as well, which are basically the same thing, um, as well as your poison creatures in there. Yeah. And then you start getting enough to actually build a deck around. But there's more. If you go with proliferate effects, suddenly you don't need as many of those creatures because if they hit you once, you get yeah, more. Yeah, you'd have to play like um, Contagion Engine, Contagion Clasp, callless things that say proliferate. Yeah, so it's not as scary as I think people are thinking it is because like people go, it's in fact, oh my gosh. But I don't think it's strong enough to be able to take three people out of infect no, damage easily. I don't. I don't think it's going to be um, a commander for it. But I think he can definitely be. In Hapatra. Yeah, I was about to say, <laughs> oh slotted in Hapatra <laughs> with all that death touches she creates. But the other thing I was going to put him in and think about is um, Atraxa. Because uh. Atraxa, Atraxa has death touch and Atraxa has proliferate. Because yeah. Atraxa needs more stuff. So, yeah, he's, I think he's a cute little commander and a nod to scarier things. Yeah, he won't. But he's not, like, he's not amazing. I think in one-on-one, -on -one, I think you've got to watch him, but the main thing of him is, if you've got lots of death touches, they're not going to want to block them. Yeah. But they're going to have to block them or get two poison counters. So you put them in a tricky situation, and I think it's going to draw unnecessary hate because people are just going to see it and go, oh. Yeah, I don't, um, so, I don't think it'll be a command. I think he's great for supporting, like I said, Hapatra and Atraxa. Yeah. But, yeah, mono green death touch doesn't seem like the new meta. If he was green-black, I'd be like, Yeah, green-black. Green black, fair enough. But, but again, another commander that's missing that key point. Yeah. But again, if you put him in as support in something else, maybe if it was two colors, it would be too good. Maybe that's what they've had with yeah, maybe, a lot of it. So. Yeah, maybe black green would have been a bit a case of, right, just Golgari infect death touch. Yeah, which... you, you've also got to remember that this isn't made for commander, it's made for standard yeah. and limited. And they don't want to break those formats any more than they already have done with certain cards. Ember Cleave. Um, so <laughs> looking at you, Oko. <laughs> yeah. So I, I get why it's not, but still, I think people will play him. Yeah. So our next legend is Halvar, God of Battle, who I think just slots straight into any equipment or aura themed Boros or Bant or Slesnia deck quite easily because of his ability to attach things and give double strike, which is great. Mm -hmm, yeah. I am thinking about putting him in Tuvasa, just because giving Tuvasa double strike because she's enchanted is great. Oh, that's horrible. I know. <laughs> um, but then you got this flip side, which is the Sword of Realms, which is... I'm not feeling that, to be honest. It's very pretty, and I think it's really, really good value. It's a good bit of, like, a safety thing if someone board wipes, you get the creature back, but yeah. I think and his other side's better, so... I think his other side's definitely <laughs> better, but his, his sword side... I can. It's one of those bits where I can see the design behind it because the like is the equip cost is one generic one white, so you can't just flick it constantly back and forth between creatures by making loads of easy 
um, callless mana, like with the um, Thopter Sword combo. But the fact that it's one white means you have to generate some like, if you want to combo off with this particular sword, you need infinite white mana, which is not very easy to do. Especially if he's the commander. Yeah, especially if he's the commander. Like, yeah. you have to build so hard around that, which I don't think it's going to happen. I think mm. I think he's definitely... Are you building something, like I said, like a Selesnia um, aura deck or equipment deck? He would definitely be in there. So, to me, I really like the creature side of it, but there's two other, at least two of that I can think of, commanders that are both, like, two mana. They say equipped creatures get double strikes. He's twice the mana cost for the same ability. Yeah. Um, and the other part where you can move things around, there's a three mana legend from Commander Legends that does that yeah, as well. Yeah. Um, the thing I do like is that his second ability of moving equip um, auras and equipment around, if someone says, um, I'm going to cast a... Um, a, a, a negative effect uh, aura on your card, like uh, pacifism, or yeah. on your you that is still attached to a creature you control, even though you don't control the aura. So you can move it to a different creature you control, so you get the creature you want back. So I thought that was quite a funky little yeah. tech, but um, yeah, it'd be more something like um, Song of the Dryads or a Dark Steel Mutation. Yeah, yeah, something cool like that. So it, it's it's interesting you can do that. Um, I, I, yeah, I don't think he's going to be the mono white. Equipment commander yeah, because there's too many good multicolored equipment commanders. Yeah, it's it's not what Mono White needed, but it's what Boros wants. And Boros is getting a lot of support recently, which I think is good because I'm sick of people saying Boros is rubbish. Because every time I play against a Boros deck, it thrashes me and everyone at the table, and I'm just like, why has it got such a bad rep? <laughs> Did you underestimate it? That may be it. I'm not going to do that anymore though. <laughs> Up next, we have Harold, King of Skemfar, who I'm not a huge fan of. So, to me, I compare her to Siona, Captain of the po Polis. Polis, yeah. But yeah. So, she lets you search seven deep, he only lets you search five deep. Yeah. So, he's just not particularly powerful. But to me, if you're going to build him, Elf Tribal or Warrior yeah. Tribal, because he also searches for warriors. Or himself. Himself? No, he doesn't. He searches for the, the Planeswalker. Oh, God, he does as well. The Himbo. The Himbo, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fair enough. So, <laughs> which you got one of in this deck because it's only been printed once. So, yeah, as you're finding that the top five great. cards in your library aren't great. But, um, yeah, I think Green Black Warriors, I've not seen much of that. that that's a potential yeah. route to go if you want to be unique. But just stick him in your 99 year elf deck. No one yeah. wants to play him when there's better. Like the the, um, the commander deck that comes out with this. Yeah, uh, Lathral Blades, yeah. Yeah, so we, we might do a video on that another time, but yeah. put him in there. Like, that's that's, why, he, that's why they printed him, so you could put yeah. him in a different deck. <laughs> Literally, the fact that he is just so fine value to be able to go through and get things from your deck and just a bit of draw in black green elves. Because mm, that's, that's the thing with. with um, Sionas, you can flicker her with white effects, yeah. but there's no real flicker in green and black, and you don't want to be killing him and bringing him yeah. back. I mean, no point. So if you could, if you had like altars out, you could make it work, but it's just so much too, effort. Yeah, it's too much effort for <laughs> just looking through like the top five cards in the library. Yeah, like there's, it doesn't even put it into play; it's put into hand, right? Yeah. So like, so yeah, so ninety nine, without a doubt, there are better black green elf commanders. Definitely, especially the new one. I quite like the new and one. And the uh, not the redeemed, the <laughs> other one, the. The, the unredeemed. The unredeemed. Yeah, the, the guy that's, yeah, yeah. Him, but they had the horns chopped off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not he. Yeah, Harold is no Reese. <laughs> Another quote with the date there. <laughs> and our next card up is Inga Ruin Eyes, a card that when it enters, scry three, super. But primarily, I see it as more like. As one interaction I want to talk about with her, but otherwise she just seems like board wipe insurance, like someone, you know, wraths, and then you mm. get to draw three cards, so you're not... That's literally what I put down is, yeah. in the 99 of a wizard deck, she scries three, so if you're doing top deck manipulation, manip manipulation um, <laughs> then she is handy for that, I suppose, and if you can flicker, you can always look at the top three cards and do some shenanigans, yeah. and then the if someone blows up the board, then you get to draw three cards, is really good, but for four mana... I want more, my commander to do more. Yeah. Especially in mono blue, you can't have a commander that just lets you look at cards and yeah, potentially draw them. <laughs> no, I... See, I, the way I saw around her is putting in something... I like the saw, because eyes... And, eh. <laughs> As I was thinking of putting it in, like, Moldrotha. So you have... Oh, yeah, you, you like have do so everything that's those colours that has... <laughs> yeah. So, but the idea is you have a sack outlet, you sacrifice your ETB guys... Um, 
to mold to the sack outlet and then you sacrifice Inga last so they go graveyard you then draw three cards but then you have the value of your inner recursion deck anyway so you sacrifice your creatures you then bring them back you can bring her back scry three in exactly I can see that yeah I can kind of see that I personally don't think she's good enough for that kind of thing no I think she like, if you're looking for more of budget just general value mold rules are built and that should be, be good for that yeah she'll be the kind of card that the guy who always makes crazy decks around commanders you've never even knew existed will make her in like two years' time when everyone's forgotten about her yeah. and they'll do something crazy with her. But I I just think if you're going to go mono blue, then there's better commanders in this set, let alone. Yeah, not in this set. There yeah, are so, like, I'd yeah. rather build a boat than. Oh, this. That is savage. <laughs> I'd rather build the boat. <laughs> Sorry, Noah. <laughs> Our next creature is Yawn, God of Winter, who is the undefined champion of uh, Snow Tribal decks, which Alex is building, in case you haven't told by his little reaction there. He's great. Well, see, that's the thing, right? I don't think he is. <gasps> so, let me let me just explain. I think, in terms of if you're playing a Snow deck, he is the best option. I'm not disputing that. Nova Cord really cares about Snow permanence, apart from him. Um, he actually have three colours, which is nice. He untaps all your snow permanents when he attacks, which is also extremely good. It's like bare umbra, but like all, everything, Snowy. everything. Because uh, if you're playing a snow permanents deck, you're going to play majority of snow permanents. Um, his other side actually recurs. Well, does it play? You can play. Yeah, snow yeah, yeah. You, you, you tap uh, the staff, and then you can play snow permanent from your graveyard that turn. So again, you got your recursion aspect there for when they kill your big thing. Because there's not many snow. I mean, there's a fair amount, but there's not many good snow permanents. So when one dies, bring it back is is helpful. But to me, he isn't going to untap your stuff very often because if you have a three three outright. Yep. And you swing it at me, yep. and I see you untap your entire board. I am going to block it and kill it if I can. Like, there's no way I'm going to be like, I'll let that hit me. It's only three damage, and then let you untap everything the next turn as well. It's going to die, and that I think is his biggest flaw. Is he's fine when he's three mana, but when he becomes five or seven, is it really worth it? Because he doesn't do anything until you attack with him again the next turn. So I think if you if you have a way of giving all your stuff haste. Then play him, then swing. Yeah, you've just got like everything on tap, so you can float any remaining mana or something like that. Yeah. But I just I feel like he looks really good in theory, but in practice, no one's gonna let you do what no, you want I, with him. No, you're right. He does. He needs some. He needs a bit of build around. Like he needs like a whisper cell cloak, somebody give him unblockable. Oh, yeah, yeah, that that would or, fix the issue. Yeah. yeah or one well, of the good thing, like Oren Frostfang, he has death to twenty attacks now. I'd still block him. I don't care if he's got death. It's like. <laughs> The fact that your thing on taps every permanent on your board, yeah, I'm not going to go, good. oh, he's going to kill my creature, I won't block it. I'm going to block him regardless. So. But, but he's, he's, he's funky, I like yeah, him. <laughs> he's, I like him a lot. Like, don't get me wrong, he himself and Snow Permanents themselves don't have big flash finishes to them. They have incremental that, value. That new, the but, new Kraken thing, and you've got Marit Lage's... Oh yeah, yeah. Like, don't just get Marit Lage, that's not a big yeah, thing. Don't get me wrong, you've got Marit Lage, you've got a Kraken, but... I mean, he's, don't get me wrong, he is going to be more of a vehicle to get to stuff like casting huge villainous wells, huge torments of hailfire. He literally doubles your ramp, and yeah. he un basically gives all your stuff vigilance because he untaps himself, he untaps yeah. all your other attacking creatures. Which, so, Especially, like, w we're being in the cause he has, you can put in um, um, Crufix, so you can just keep all that mana. All the mana. Exactly. It's just a shame that you know, don't, there aren't really many snow ramp cards, like the signets and stuff like that. There's like one or two, isn't there? Yeah, which you can untap. So yeah, so it does. It does have to be a lot of Kodama's Reach, or there's a few other snow. Uh, Journey into the Wilds is a good one. That's mm. such for just snow lands. Yeah, uh, you do have to go more land based rather than artifact based for your ramp. Which is fine. It's green. You've got yeah. You've got that, so. And we now have all ten of the fetchable snow jewel lands. We do. So which you've are got the, the fixing for three yeah, color Which is the only. Which is the only top lands I will ever run. <laughs> Our next card that we're going to be looking at is Cardor the Doom Scourge, who, when he enters, pseudo goes everything, which is a bit neat. Um, but the primary thing that gets me, well, is two things. One, I'll talk about after we talk about the card, but the other one is the fact that it's his ability to drain people's only when they are dead by attacking, which, like, if it was just general, I'd say, like, yes, this is a blood artist effect in the command zone it's, in black uh, red, brilliant. Well, what's but, the. Um... The, the red black one who's just sat on a throne 
we met we met um, met her at. Go on, baby, you can do this. I believe in you. I don't remember her name. He's a J. Oh gosh, there's so much pressure. I can barely remember people's names. That alone, f- cardboard. The funniest thing is going to be right there, and everyone's going to be able to see it. But you can't. Oh, I was like, what? Oh yeah, there's going to be something here. Um, you're going to have to help me. Judith. Judith. J- Judith is Scourge everything. Scourge diva. Scourge. She's like. Everything dies, right? Yeah, so, Judith, Judith is a far better aristocrat style Rakdos commander than this guy is. Well, I mean, I kind of get she's better at aristocrats, like, I'll give you that. Honestly, she has I half think, pump, she's cheaper mana cost, and she just looks better. She, she does look better, I can't deny that she looks like a queen there. Um, but I think that this guy is better than you think. So his pseudo goad comes in. If you find a way of. Like, if your opponents have lots of creatures, they're going to have to smash into each other. The only way that doesn't work is if your opponent can't physically be attacked. So, for example, if they have uh, propaganda, yeah, and there's three of you out, one has propaganda, the person other than the guy with propaganda has to attack, and you're the only target, you're going to get hit by his creatures, which kind of sucks. Um, the other thing is that it has to be an attacking creature that dies due to get the trigger, which, again, isn't fantastic. Yeah. Um, but it means your opponent's going to question, should I block this thing coming at me? Because if it dies, it's going to trigger the commander. You might have like a blood artist out. It might have other effects. I just yeah. have effects. Um, it's going to it have ju- a knock-on effect. For it just seems like aristocrats, but with additional steps. It does. But one thing that I found quite interesting about it is his ability of pseudo-goading. Yeah. Um, it... Doesn't, it's not just the creatures that are out, so if you play him and then your opponent plays additional creatures on their turn, they also have to attack if, oh, right. if, they, if they have haste, yeah, obviously, yeah, they yeah. can't attack normally. But I've just found that quite funny how like it's not a everything on the board now, it's yeah. everything that will be on the board in your opponent's next really? turn, so that's, they, can't, uh, they can't be like, right, well, I'm going to play lots of things yeah. to swing at you with, they've, they've got to swing at someone else, so... But yeah, I would say Judith is probably a better aristocrat style commander, but I think he's definitely funny. He's definitely a new addition to the aristocrat family. Yeah. There's also something about him that I only know because I saw Peel point this out on Twitter, is the fact that this is the first legend that we've had that has been printed in a standard set whose effect is only really relevant in EDH. Oh, because there's no point goading a single player. That's interesting. I never thought about that. So, which <laughs> I saw a lot of people being very down on it because, like, why are you printing this in? Like, because obviously, imagine, like, imagine you pull this and it it could have been a better card. But it, <laughs> it's but it's not draw- common though. Alex. Yeah, I know. Like- <laughs> but like, I do appreciate it in a draft format. It does seem like a bit of a, a bad thing. But like, in one on one, you get to control what his ability of destroying a the attacking creature dying yeah. triggers. You get to control. I still am I going to kill it yeah. or not? But so. I just thought it was a quite interesting thing. They've they've printed a directly for EDH card in a standard set. That is uh, interesting. And I think they do it quite often, but never with like things that are useless. Yeah, like a, le- like a legend yeah, directly yeah. into standard. Hmm. So our penultimate creature is called the Forge Master, who is one of the two mana equipment creatures I was referring to when we were talking about the mana like Sir God. Yep. Um, I think he is amazing. I really, really like him. For an uncommon, he is so powerful. Is, so yeah. your good creatures you want out, like your pure pure steel paladin tell me near Liverpool. Uh, pure steel paladin. Um uh, your powerful creatures that you want to stick loads of stuff on with keywords, evasion. They're going to die when people get a chance to kill them because they're going to kill them otherwise. So you put them back in your hand when they die, replay them, stick all the stuff back on them. Yeah. Like it, It's really good recursion. But he also cares about tokens. Your tokens get a buff, so if you want to go wide rather than like heavy, uh, you can play the heroic kind of cards where you target them, yeah, you, yeah, one, you make one, a token, one, yeah. you stick the thing on the token, you can go wide. It just gives them a little bit of a buff. Yeah, and you, it's in white, so you can play like... Um... Anointed Procession, Divine mm-hmm. Visitation. Yeah, so I, I like that aspect of it, but the main thing that I saw online which makes me think this is a good, good commander is people are using zero mana creatures like Kobolds, like Ornithopter, uh, and they're getting Boblin, Boblin? Goblin at Bombardment yeah. um, playing that, getting a, a equipment that costs zero to equip or using effects like Pure Steel Pardon to make it zero to equip. Yeah. Sticking the equipment on the goblin, or the kobold, or yep. whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. 
sacrificing the Goblin Bombardment. It goes back to your hand because it was equipped. You Dead. replay it, you do it again, you replay it, you do it again, and you shock people out of the game. Which, fair enough, I didn't know. I hadn't actually seen that. Mm, and you can tutor for the enchantments, the artifacts, because... Yeah, you're, you're in white, yeah. You're in white, so, so. Yeah, so you can play either tutors for that. But yeah, to be honest, like, I didn't know that. I honestly thought he was a bit... A bit haphazard. Like, he seemed a bit... Trying to do tokens, trying to do equipment. Those two things don't usually go together. He gives you options. That's yeah. the thing. Well, yeah, you, well, you know me. I like my commanders to be... Here's what the commander's doing. Well, that's things like Wyleth up there. Like... He is, you stick as much stuff on him as possible, yeah. you swing, you draw, you... Yeah, he, he is, I'm going to slap you with But this. what if someone gets rid of him? You turn him into a tree with some of the dryads. Yeah. You, you have really got no other option but to yeah. stick everything on another creature and hope for the best. But yeah. then you've got to deal 40 instead of 21 damage. This is, right, my Voltron strategy of just hitting them with my commander isn't working. Uh, let's go wide, let's go combo. You have backup options, which I think in Boros especially, is difficult to find in a commander. They're usually yeah. very much, I'm going to hit you till you die. So having like the other options is great. Yeah. And I do think the fact that he is, like, he's an uncommon, mm. he's small mana, I do think he's actually very powerful for it. Yeah, yeah. I, I think he is one of my favourite commanders from this set. Um, even from like recent time, I think he's he's just, it's interesting. Oh. He's, he's different. It, he's, he's just what everything I want in a Boros <laughs> commander. <laughs> He doesn't say the word draw a card on it though, so he doesn't. But there's plenty of like things that. Well, you about to say there's plenty of draw on Boros. Well, there's there's the white ones that care about auras. Uh, that's true. I don't know. I'm really clutching at straws there, but there's there's other things you can put other Voltron commanders in there. Yeah. And then stick the stuff on them and just have him as there to bring them back to your hand and play them again because people are going to kill them because they're good. Yeah. So if you if you have your your Wirelifts, your Aurelias. They're going to be killed by people's kill spells, so as long as they're equipped, you just play them next turn. And I think that's the important bit of him is things don't die when you stick good stuff on them. Seems good. Which actually does seem to get around the idea of I want boss palms they do run out of card advantage, they do run out of answers, but if mm. your threats are just constantly being bounced back to your hand. Or ETB things, you could like have an ETB trigger that's really good, like Sun Titan. And then purposely throw it yeah, and yeah. bring it back and just be like, yeah. Sunday and again. Like, yeah, yeah, I think he's definitely really good. <laughs> and our final potential commander for this episode is going to be Kolvori, God of Kinship, who is a potential 6-6 six, six for small amounts of mana if you have a lot of legends out. But this is also mono green, so not really. What? I'm going to interrupt you here. I say it. Don't even try and protect this card. I hate it with a passion. <laughs> so let's just let's just compare a few things, right? Let's go with flavour. She's a god of kinship, oh. being together. But her ability only helps her. It doesn't do anything to any other creatures you control. Her draw ability is like tap two mana, like Reiki for three mana is like just draw because you played something, which is a lot more kin friendly to me. See, her flip side, don't even get me started on her flip side, it's a rubbish, rubbish <laughs> mana rock. It's like the worst mana rock I've ever seen in my life. Like, just, it's just awful. I, everything about this card is bad. When I, when I first saw it, I was like, ooh, a mono green cares about Legends card. My Reiki dreams are coming true. No, it's awful. It's just terrible. <laughs> So don't shall, play this card. <laughs> shall we just say might be good in the elf deck and move on? It's not even is it an elf? I, I don't know. It's a god. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can, yeah on the flip side, you choose a, a creature type. Oh, okay, so for two mana, you restrict <laughs> yourself to only being able to cast elves of your mana rock, rather than playing a different two mana one that has no such restrictions. It's you just really, awful. You really hate this card. I do. I, I, I think <laughs> that. If you're going to make a Legends Matter card oh in the same set as the Five Core Legends Matter Commander and make it this bad, it, why? <laughs> so yeah, in conclusion, I will cry if I see this card in a game in Commander. <laughs> Rant over. <laughs> oh, cue the music. I hate that card so much, it's so awful. Right. And that'll be it from us for the time being, guys. I'm going to tune in next time for part two, where we're going to be looking over the other half of all the Kaldheim legends and giving our opinions on them. Yep, so don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell icon so you know when our videos come out. 
and leave us a comment below telling us what you think of these creatures. Are there any that we've got horribly wrong or do you just want to trigger me with that god of kinship? Comment it below, I read everyone. And don't forget you can follow us on Twitter at Fort Commander or if you really like us you could consider becoming a patron of the channel yourself for access to exclusive EDH related rewards. But that'll be it from us guys. We'll see you next time. Bye.